Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are going to game six between Lenok and Morrow. Let's go ahead and get right into it, Kaldor. We are on dual side, and at the left side of the map, we have Lenok, the Zerg player from Team FXO in the red colors, while his opponent was just able to win his second game in the series. The second map in this best of seven series is starting at the right side. We have uh, Morrow in the blue colors, and this is the sixth game of the best of seven. Mm -hmm. Sixth game, and we are over here on dual side, as you said. Um, you know, this is considered, I think by statistics, it's actually Terran favored, but people consider consider this a Zerg favored map. Is that correct, Kaldor? I'm not, uh, I just called you out. I'm sorry for calling you on the spot. BM, no, BM no problem. <laughs> Especially when it comes down to uh, a ZVP, it's definitely a Zerg favorite map as most Protoss players are stuck struggling quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And especially the two base all-ins are very, very strong on this map when uh, a Zerg player is facing a Protoss. When it comes down to the ZVT, it's... It's actually, the, the main problem is getting the third base for the Zerg player yes. because it's kind of far away and you can put a lot of pressure onto the Zerg with Hellions when you're a Terran player. But um, yeah, I think it's it's about even to be honest when it comes down to the statistics. So I've seen a lot of games where the Zerg player was able to uh, uh, put a lot of pressure onto the Terran, especially Linux, <coughs> who is uh, trying to use Baneling, Burrow Banelings quite often, was able to take down a lot of Terran players on dual side. But on the other hand, if the Terran is able to get the third with the planetary fortress at this position then he has a lot of very very small push distances especially to the potential third and fourth base of his opponent so it's it's i think it kind of equals out in the end yeah uh, there's definitely a lot of different things that each player can do two base all ins are very prevalent on this map uh for both for both races i don't want to make it just like oh terran has a two base all in or zerg has a two base all in it, yep. it goes back to the fact that there is an open natural over here, and as you said it best, the third is so hard to take for Zerg just because you're expanding towards your opponent or you're expanding to a place where it's super far away from your main and natural. So we'll see how Lenox actually plays this out. And um, we have one strategy that uh, we mentioned a little bit on uh, Belcher Beach, and it's a similar situation on uh, dual side. The attacks with Marauder and Hellion are quite common in the TVZ on dual side, and they deal a lot of damage because you have uh, like two different angles where you can attack. So defending with spine crawlers is really, really hard, and uh, a lot of Tyrone players make good use of this. Yeah, I completely agree. So we'll probably, well, yeah, we'll probably see something like that. Factory Tech is going down. The reactor is coming up. Now, we've seen a very, very static style, I want to say, from uh, from Morrow. He's done the same opening every single time. Kaldor, are, do you think we're going to see the same thing again? Triple Command Center? No. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see this on, on uh, dual side. I think he's going for some kind of different uh, strategy. Um, he will take a third, but I don't think that he will take it that fast. Yeah. I mean, especially after last game, and I think Metropolis is a really nice Zerg map, especially for Mutalist, which we didn't see as much, but still. Um, I think if I were in in uh, Morrow's shoes, I would just play ultra defensive and just force endgame every single time, knowing that my decision making is a lot better than my opponents. I mean, we saw time and time again that, you know, it, it felt like the Zerg just had an alarming economy, but Maru didn't even care. He was just like, let's go to endgame and play it out that way. And I think if he just plays defensive in this match, goes to that endgame, he'll be in a great opportunity. But if Lenok is the one that's actually focusing the pressure and it looks like he's starting off with it. He's uh, doing a little bit of roach pressure in this early game stage. Yes, he is. And the problem for Moro now is that he has no Marauders being built. He has the he has the tech lab, so he can start with the Marauder production as soon as he realizes what's happening. But those early roach pushes have been built by, uh, uh, exercised by, for example, Don Regu. I mentioned that yeah. in the earlier game of this series. And if the Terran player is playing a little bit too greedy, Zerg can punish him quite hard and sometimes even end the game. The first Marauder is being built 
killed now, but the Roaches are already parting it up, are trying to attack the supply depots and the SCVs at the back. And there are five of them so far. Usually you execute it with about seven. Three additional ones are joining the first five, though. And if he's able to get into the main base, that Ooh. would be horrible. Ooh, the Spidey was almost down, and it goes down. So he will be able to get in here, starts to deal a little bit of damage onto these SCVs. A lot of SCVs are being taken out, but in the meantime, I don't know what happened to those Hellions over there. Uh, but they're, oh, they're actually going to come back here. But let's see how many SCVs he actually killed. Nine, it looks like. And finally, these roaches will be cleared up. Uh, wow, that is a huge amount of damage being dealt over there. Yeah, exactly. It's not only that he lost the supply depot that he had to build that on a bunker, that he lost a couple of units, but those SCVs in the early stage of the game, I mean, we have the 7.30 minute mark roughly, that really hurts quite a lot. He's down to 23 now. He has two mules, which obviously gives him a slight edge over his opponent for a while, but he doesn't have all that much energy. So uh -oh. Lino is in a decent position, but the Hellions are trying to, uh, uh, trying to put a number onto the drones so if he's actually able to kill enough of them, then he might be able to equal the harvest accounts once again. Yep, it doesn't look like he's able to get too many triggers. I mean, he did clear up a lot. Let's go ahead and look at the income tab. 37 to 24, but losing, I think it was four Hellions in that exchange. Not the best exchange completely. He did kill five drones in that. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just... That was, I think, his only advantage, having that, I guess, map control and the speed, the the threat of those Hellions doing immense damage, but now that that's gone, we are going to see probably a third come out, I would I would assume. Leenok has the ability to take his third now, now, knowing that his opponent doesn't have a lot of Hellions anymore, and he could probably just extend his lead further and further in this game. And now we have him once again with that macro hatch that he has been showing us in every single game so far. So he really likes this macro hatch. He's droning it up quite a bit, adding 10 additional ones, tagging to Lair. And he might just go for a, Mut uh, for a Spire as soon as he reaches Lair tech, because with a Spire or with Mutalus, he can uh, quite harass a lot of positions on this map. So a Spire tech would be the the usual choice for Zerg play against Terran on this map. I agree. It's just you want those counterattacking options. Also, there's a little bit of indication because we don't have double evolution chambers that are going down. Normally, he, um, Leenok is a player, uh, is a huge proponent of double upgrades when you're going something like Zergling Roach in that early game stage. And there it is. Calder, you're absolutely right. The Spire has gone up. Uh, but in the meantime, we are witnessing a push. Marines and it looks like two siege tanks being pushed out, trying to die that third. Yep, that's a uh, uh, that army has already been scouted, and it looks like it's a oh, no. <laughs> it looks rather small. And he's stimming already to take down those roaches. He doesn't have any medivacs oh, with God. his army, and there are the zerglings oh, attacking from all sides. And this looks actually not all too good. Uh, well, Moro is able to clear that push, but still. Pushing further is a mistake, in my opinion, because he just stimmed so often and he doesn't have any medivacs. That army size is dwindling by the second. Yeah, Combat Shields is about to finish, but he still needs to back up. You can see that he, it does give him an extra 10 life, of course, but if you look at it, it's over, well, a little bit of attack coming in here, but it's still almost half, I mean, half your life that you just stimmed away, so you do want to back up. And we do see Morrow is going for the command center, so he's actually expanding directly after this instead of trying to contest the third. I think taking a third base for him is going to be so difficult. Um, you know, just dealing with all the mobility of those Mutalisks is very troublesome. And, oh my god, Morrow went for, for engineering base. Yeah. <laughs> he made a mistake and uh, built four engineering bays right now. Oh two God. at the top right and two <laughs> at the bottom. And 11 mutalisks are about to pop. So, well, <laughs> this is going to be really tough. Well, he now. could get, okay, I'm, I'm going to defend him right here. He could get building armor and high sec auto tracking. And that gives the turrets a range of eight, which is insane and plus two armor, so turrets will actually have three. So basically the glaives do nothing, and turrets stay alive a lot longer. I highly doubt he's gonna do that, but uh, you know, it's a possibility. possibility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how dare you? Don't talk about my bunker upgrades like that. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. Uh, we have another stim by Moro's Marine, and Moro is just now stimming 
everywhere. He does have the first medivac out, but Linok is happy to just attack his opponent, force those stims over and over and over again, and oh, try to pick off no. unit by unit, killing that. Yep, killing the first medivac. And might even try to take on those marines on the left side, but no, they are already joined by a couple of friends, and therefore there is no chance for him to take down that small army. Yeah, the Minos have to be very careful, but the third has been taken by Mara. Mara's going to just reposition the command center ever so slightly, but you know what? I have to say, Lenok is still in a great position, even though the third is taken. It's not really situated yet because it can be harassed very easily. It's going to be up to Lenok, though, to actually utilize that mobility advantage and take advantage of the fact that his opponent is just so spread out. And he's already taking a fourth, taking on a siege tank as well. So at least one of the siege tanks it has been killed. And yeah, Moro with that small blunder with a four engineering base. I think it was just an autopilot in this situation. So uh, basically just completely zoned out and didn't <laughs> realize that he already built two of them. So yeah, I think so. And, and look, these. Go ahead. No, I was just about to mention that he's adding more and more barracks. He's right now on like eight barracks already. So, getting a lot of potential bioproduction facilities. And here's the thing, I mean, the mutas are so powerful because of their mobility, they can always catch units, and, and he's actually spreading the units all out. Uh, there's the big stem, the banelings are actually going to search for it. Are they actually going to go on top of the marines or the SCVs? They're going for the bunker now, trying to chase down those SCVs, but they're not going to get there. They do clean up that one turret. But, you know, the mobility is always consistently going to catch his opponent out of position. He can definitely take advantage of that. Lenok just has to make sure that he's catching all of his opponent or all of his units, his opponent's units out of position. There's one big problem when you face Ling and Mutalisk as a Terran player and you don't have the resources or the ability to get Thors is that the Mutalisk will just try to circle your army and always try to pick off one or two of the siege tanks. You have to spread the siege tanks out and uh, the Marines won't be enough to babysit that army. You need one or two Thors just to be able to deal with the Mutalisk because every time they need to focus a Thor they cluster up and that's when the Thors come into play. Yeah, and right now, obviously, I mean, not having the Thor, and even if you have a Thor, you need a lot of Thors because you need a lot. You need to defend a lot of positions. Yeah. So, um, it, it's it's harder and harder to do a style like this to go into macro. But we'll see if um, you know Mar can do it because he is in equal supplies. Maybe this the will be very right. advantageous. We just had a small drop by Moro that didn't accomplish all too much. Linok was on top of this game. He was just moving his drones to the side and then defended with a bunch of Zerglings while the main army of Moro is now trapped in his main base once again. He just needs to defend for now. He's even building a fourth command center. He wants to uh, expand once more, but uh, wow. Linok just oh with more God. and more upgrades, maxing out his army, is circling around the edges of Moro's forces and taking on another medivac. And this could well be the big uh -oh. clash between those two players. Big, big surround. Units come from the top and the bottom. The Banelings are surging forward. The Marines actually have to split onto Creep. That's not where he wants to be. Everything being cleaned up. More Banelings coming from the left-hand side. Everything gets wiped out. Mao's Moro is facing elimination in this best of seven. That was a big, big, gigantic win for Lenok. And now Lenok might just go and just clean things up, take out this third, and solidify his win for the first place in this series. He is still ahead with 30 supply, and uh, Linok is now just slaughtering Moro. He is taking on everything that Moro has, and to be fair, that's not a lot right now. He is, uh, well, he has a lot of Marines, but that's basically oh. all there is. And the failings! Ooh, he's just taking on the tanks. He doesn't even care. He's trading armies right now. He's happy to do so, while the Mutalists are harassing the SCVs, are taking on that expansion. So. Moro in such a bad position, down like 40, 50 supply, and Lino building nine additional mutalists. He will have 32 of them, and they already have the plus two attack upgrade. Wow. Yeah, Lenok is actually... Drop at the bottom. Yep, Lenok's going to clean this up very easily. It did do a little bit of damage to the bottom right-hand expansion, obviously taking out the hatchery. But is it too little too late? Um, now... You know, Morrow can just defend up, but he needs like a minute to actually gain as many units as possible because right now he's pretty low. He doesn't have a good siege tank count to actually deal with the Banelings. I mean, just look at that, picking off just siege tanks, 
punishing his opponent for not having any Thors out in the field. It's exactly what you want to do when you have that mass muted count. And uh, from here, this is going to catch his opponent out of position, going over to this right-hand side, and uh, this is going to spell disaster, I think, for Amaro. And the Mutalis are just harassing him everywhere, picking up another medivac, taking down an SCV, bunch of marines, and now the Zerglings stream in. The siege tanks are not being sieged up, and the Zerglings alone with the Bailings should be enough to win this game in favor of Linox. All those marines, nice split by Moro, but oh will it be God. enough? It certainly doesn't look so. He's losing everything now. That's gonna do it. Moro loses everything in his army. The Mutas still live. Uh, he might go on a little bit further, but you know what? His main is dried up. His natural is almost about to dry up. Only six mineral patches. And of course, this, uh, this third expansion is only being defended by a single bunker. In the meantime, the bottom right hand is taken. So this is going to be uh, the last leg of... Uh, of Mara, Mara able to actually wow. save his Oracle Command Center. <laughs> that was weird. I thought that it was the Gauna for sure. Yeah. But no, he's able to save it. At the same time, the Marines are getting cleared up by all those Mutalists. And this is basically oh. it. It's just a pre match. Finally, a Thor. And oh, already dead and gone. A little bit too late. Too little, too late. And Lenok is going to be crowned the second Sunday Show Match Series winner. Of course, the first one was Pult. So congratulations to him. I mean, not much that Mara can do, but Mara, let me tell you, this guy played fantastic. I wish him a lot of luck in Korea. I know he's he's been training there for a little bit. Uh, did he leave, actually, Keldor? No, he's uh, he's staying here. He's still at the Gom House. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, so obviously showing some awesome games this time around, especially that last one. The Metropolis game, absolutely insane. But here, I mean, the production is just being overrun. You can see... More Zerglings and Mutas over here. I'm sure he's going to be rallying more units, but uh, Lenok, I just mean, have to realize who more oh. was up against. I mean, Lenok did end uh, did end up second place in Code S for a reason, and his TVZ is really amazing. He was able to take down MVP, and that alone says uh, quite a bit. So he's such an accomplished player, such a good player, and therefore Moro didn't sell himself short. He won two of the games in this series, and even though in the end he was defeated by Lino, this is nothing to be ashamed of. Definitely not. And, you know, this is going to do it. I mean, I don't think there's any way that Moro can do anything. He can't kill these Mutas. They're just sniping off all the reactors. But uh, overall, this game was... Again, pretty. These two players. I wish we can see more show matches between them because I think this is a really, really good fight. Uh, especially a great challenge for Moro. Um, I really have a lot, a lot of respect for him. I've always had it ever since the StarCraft Brood War days, and I think this guy. He's so young. He has so much potential. We're gonna see him flourish in in the uh, the Korean scene. Yeah, I certainly hope so, and he plans on staying here for quite a while, so I will obviously stay in Korea too, so yeah. I want to see how he's developing within the next few weeks or months, and I really hope that at some point he will be able to uh, really show his potential in uh, co in the Code S, but yeah, well, we'll see. For now, he showed an amazing best of seven uh, series against Linok, but of course, Linok, let's talk about him a little bit. Yeah. He just played so very well. He was a little bit, it seemed a bit like he was just overwhelmed of the Metropolis in the Metropolis game. Yes. Like it was too much for him to handle, but all his two base pushes were just so spot on, though his timings were so perfect. And uh, he took down Moro with 4-2 in uh, quite a convincing fashion. Well, let's be honest. Lenok, if anything we can talk about him, he knows how to keep his advantages. Every single game that he's won, he's gotten either like an early or a mid-game advantage. This game, we saw the Roaches do very well. We've so seen a lot of Roach Circling Banelings do well against his opponent. Things have been very straightforward. Um, so I think actually Lenok understands just how to maintain a lead, but when he's going into just straight up macro mode, like we saw on Antigua Shipyard, like we saw on uh, Metropolis, where nothing really happens, he doesn't know where he is. And that's not to take away anything from him, because that takes a lot of skill to understand where you are. Mario obviously likes to play towards that style. I know he practices like that a lot. Um, but Lenok, definitely a player that uh, relies on taking the initiative, always understanding where he is against his opponent, having tempo control, applying the aggression, and we've seen that style do so well 
in this particular series and in the GSL. And not only that, I should also say in MLG and other tournaments like that. So again, Lenok, really, really great play player. I like his style a lot, and I think it's very, very, um, you know, uh, prof uh, not proficient. It's very, very uh, strong, just strong in today's metagame. Yeah, definitely. And well, for us, it was obviously awesome. We have seen a lot of different games, a lot of very awesome games. And you're perfectly right. I would love to see more games of those two because it was really entertaining. And I think we've seen a very, very high um, level ZVT today. Yeah. So that's going to do it. 4-2 in favor of Lenaki is going to take him the $400 prize purse. And, uh, of course, Mara will take you home $100. If you missed any of the action, go check us out on YouTube.com slash NASTarly. You can also uh, follow us and tweet us at uh, Facebook and Twitter. We are Facebook.com slash NASLTV, Twitter.com slash NASLTV. You can also find myself. I am GreyTorp on Twitter and on Facebook. And Caldor, where the, can they find you if they're searching for more stuff from you? Well, I'm also on Twitter, and uh, on Twitter I'm uh, Calder, which is spelled with an KH, and on Facebook it's facebook.com slash TV. So I'm actually also on both of those social network pages. And uh, Caldor, we thank you so much for everything you've done here at the NASL. Obviously you helped us out all week long, uh, and it was great having you. Hopefully we can have you again. I would yeah. love to uh, be at uh, uh, one point again in the show. It was really nice, and I uh, love casting with you guys. It's really awesome, so thank you very much for inviting me. And IU, I do want to give uh, a special thanks to the people that made this possible, and that's, of course, going to be iBuyPower. Uh, iBuyPower is the supplier, the computer supplier of the NASL, so a big thanks to them. Also, we want to give a thanks to Azo Monitors. Um, we want to give thanks to... Uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Cooler Master, Kingston HyperX, and Beyond Gaming. So big shout out and a thanks. Go tweet at them and um, you know just give them support because they've been able to make esports really start up and to get it going like that with a lot of trust uh, is is kind of bold. It's it's a really bold move. Uh, this industry is just starting up and um, you know it's just uh, it's really really nice to have so much confidence. Uh, from from those type of companies. So a big thanks to them. And that's going to do it. So from everybody here at the NASL studio, we thank you guys for tuning in. Catch us next week where we will have not only the NASTL, but the Sunday, sh uh, the Sunday show matches. So I'm Greatorp signing out. I'll catch you guys next time.